Hello guys, it is Gallant here once again, and today we're going to be talking about legacy servers. Mainly, we're going to be talking about how Mark Kern released a video via Kungan TV, openly showing the massive amount of support behind legacy servers. Now, that link will be down in the description below, and so I definitely urge you to check that out. It's, it's really quite interesting. So let's get right into it. Anyone who has been anywhere on the internet that involves World of Warcraft knows about this debate. Up until now, Blizzard has seemed to shrug off the fact that so many people are interested in these servers. And at this current point in time, the petition, which will also be linked down in the description below, has 238,419 supporters. They are trying to get Blizzard to reconsider their firm stance on the servers, but Outside of that, let's just talk about the possibilities as well as the drawbacks that Blizzard could possibly see from listening to this outcry. First of all, let's do the pros. The pros are always the best. So, number one, as stated by Mark Kern, if legacy servers were to exist, many number of top Switch streamers would return and stream World of Warcraft. This could very easily make it one of the top watch games on Twitch up there with Hearthstone. As you know, if you are active on Twitch, it's usually Hearthstone, CSGO, and League of Legends up the top, and then they trump most every other game. Next up, with so much love for previous versions of World of Warcraft, veterans and newbies alike would return to play a new old version if it were released today, whether to just try it out or return to the game they loved. The overall spread would be enormous since there are millions more WoW age people on the internet now than ever me being one of them, since the height of my vanilla and Burning Crusade gameplay was questing in Fairless and questing in Shadowmoon between my 4th and 6th grade years of grade school. I would definitely be interested in trying these out and finally playing the game that so many people love. Now let's look at a possible, this is the only possible con I could see of this server going up. Budget and revenue. Those are what come to mind when you really talk about these servers, because there's no reason that Blizzard has besides that to put these up. Like, it wouldn't make them money, they believe. So let's do some math. If they believe the servers would not generate enough revenue, imagine this. Ten years ago, people paid $15 a month for World of Warcraft. That being said, I'm willing to bet that they would pay that now, even more possibly. Now, let's say... Blizzard hires a team of 30 people of, let's say, an average salary of 60000 a year as my first Google search turned up. <laughs> 59000 is what that turned up, but I'll just round it to sixty. That's a total of $1.8 million in salaries alone annually. Now let's look at the petition. I'm guessing, this is just a speculation, that each and every one of those people to sign the petition would pay for this version of the game and the security to play it without everything being lost and also being against the terms of service and all that good stuff 238,000 people $15 a month in a month it would be a little over 3 million but in a year it would be 42 million dollars worth of income so if you guys didn't notice, I don't actually see any cons with the legacy servers. That's only the petition. Those, that's, those are only the peop people who signed the petition who I'm counting in there. Now, let's say all the veterans who, once BC was released, they're like, wow, I worked so hard to get all this, and now it's just it's not going to mean anything. Well, guess what? They're new, they are going to return, and they're going to play the game that they fell in love with, that so many years ago and World of Warcraft finally after so many years of loss would make a gain next up we need to talk about the live version so the progressive version as it is now and where it's going now I could see there's been some speculation on this being the last expansion I would hope not because I do actually I would like to see the game continue but that being said, when you look at the revenues that the other server could make from 
200 250,000 people that could that could be its own game they could be entirely separate i don't know how long it would last because there is eventually a point where vanilla would run out and people may just get complacent and quit but as of now i mean that's years down the line so many people would play that server and people would also be playing a live server. They could be two separate games coexisting. Not everyone is going to be playing the legacy servers if they launch, is what I'm trying to say. There would still be a large, considerable player base that plays a live game. Maybe not as large, but there would still be that niche amount of players, me being one of them, I would actually play both, that still want to see the game progress and continue. Now let's look at that. People who would play both. I know I would play both. Uh, I've actually heard uh, streamer YouTuber Asmongold, he said he would play both. There are a ton of people who would play both servers if they were available. Both servers being live as it is now, live as Legion, and the legacy servers, let's say vanilla. That would just generate even more for this company that the only reason they wouldn't do it is because they don't want to. This morning at just about midnight, although possibly just to please the community and kind of slow the outrage, J. Allen Brack posted on the WoW forums in response to all the events of the past month with Nostarius. Near the end of the acknowledgement, he actually said something that I, I thought was very important. And what he said was, We've recently been in contact with some of the folks who operated Nostalrius. They obviously care deeply for the game, and we look forward to more conversations with them in the coming weeks. The main thing that sticks out is in the coming weeks. So that's very interesting that they would say a specific timeline versus in the future. Just a thought. And then it, the fact that they're actually talking and not just blocking everything out it's good. Now, what could this mean directly? Who knows? Maybe Blizzard is talking to them to see just how they felt about it or why they wanted to do what they were doing, But although that is pretty clear on why they wanted to. But maybe, just maybe, Blizzard will adopt Nostarius. Maybe even some of the people who helped run Nostarius invite them to be in the Blizzard company with this giant project and announce the redevelopment of Vanilla WoW. That is absolute speculation, but coming from that quote right there, that's what I could gather, if anything. I hope you learned a little bit about how these issues have blown up. They, they've they really become big questions, especially on Blizzard's end. So if you liked the video, go ahead and toss it a like or even subscribe. I like to do a lot of stuff on WoW and the Alpha especially. And if you have any comments or just want to discuss these events, I urge you to put a comment below. I will respond as long as it's not, you know, just, oh my god, rage. And yeah, so that's about it. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you next time.